Hello, my sewing friends. It's time again for the Fab Five to do their quarterly collab. And this time, we're talking animal prints. Woohoo! I'm Jen, and this is my sewing room where I made this and that and that for our collab. We are the Fab Five. Adam from Adam Sews, Carol from Sew Carol, Andra from Andra Makes, and Trish from Pinky's Farm. Andra suggested that we all do a collaboration about once a quarter, and we would each choose a theme. Last time the theme was space and it was my choice, and this time it's Trisha's choice, and she chose animal prints. So everybody uh, interprets this a different way. And for me, I decided rather than going with the traditional interpretation of that, which is to choose a cheetah print or a tiger print or a lion print or a zebra print. Nope, I decided what I wanted to do was choose a print with animals on it. So uh, instead of choosing an animal print in the traditional way, I went with a quilting calico cotton that has sea creatures all over it. <laughs> and let me tell you a little bit about this fabric. It is uh, a collection from Stacy. I can't pronounce, pronounce her last name, it's H-S-U. And uh, the, the manufacturer is Moda and her collection is called The Sea in Me. And this particular print is Ocean Creatures and it's in pink. And so I got this about a year ago, March, at the Sewing and Quilting Expo. And I knew I needed just the right pattern for it. And so I waited and waited and finally, Trish, my BFF, thrifted a pattern and she gave it to me. And she said, when I saw this, it just screamed you. And so it is Vogue 2783. This is a DK and Y pattern, which is Donna Karen. And um, it's rated as average and it calls for um, broadcloth, well, lightweight gabardine, lightweight crepe and linen. So broadcloth, this worked perfectly. It does call for piping. It has a belt that uh, is a little bit dropped from the waistline. And it has a band at the bottom that is done with piping. You can do two versions. They're both sleeveless, but one has the piping and the other does not. So I did the version with the piping. Well, let me tell you about this dress. Oh, but before I do that, I also made a hat. And the hat's from New Look 6024, which I think is hilarious. Now, this is a thrifted pattern for me. And when I got the insides of it out, there was no dress or top. There was only, or belt, there was only the purse and the hat. So that was all I needed was the hat. So there's the hat. There were some challenges. So let me tell you about those two major ones. The first major challenge was piping. I wanted to do a contrast piping rather than a white because I just liked the look of the contrast. I thought it made uh, these uh, style lines pop a little better. So I went over to Hobby Lobby because it's close and they had this seam binding and quilt binding in this shell pink, which is perfect. So I decided I'll make my own piping. So I went to do that and I realized I was out of cording and I had a reel of it and I think I've just used it up. So they didn't have at Hobby Lobby any more drapery cord, which is what I've always used to make the piping. And basically you just take the cord and you sandwich the piping kind of down in the crease of the seam binding. And then you go along with the zipper foot or a cording foot or your regular foot, however you do it. And you push that cord up into the fold of the bias tape and that's how you make the piping. So I needed cord and they didn't have any more of the drapery stuff because they clearanced all of it out. So they gave me this and this is, uh, it was on a reel, like a ribbon reel and you would use it for like, you know, a drawstring around your waist, around your, you know, whatever. It was too fat. I got all the piping made. I got it all done in the front and I thought, ooh, that looks terrible. That piping is so fat. 
it was too much, you know? So I was in Hobby Lobby for something else and I saw that they were clearancing out all of their uh, drapery stuff. And so I found this, this is a big, big reel of number two poly cord, which is kind of like what you'd use to pull your blinds with or your drapes. And it's much thinner, you can tell. It's, uh, it's a whole lot thinner. That's what I wanted. So I saw this and the whole thing was about $21. So I thought, fine, I'll just buy that. That saves me a trip to Joanne's half hour either way. And yeah, I'll just do that. So I used that for the piping. So that problem solved. I didn't have to go find things. Second problem was the fit of the dress. Now this came out in uh, several ways. As I said, I got the whole front of it done, but I noticed these triangles were coming down way too low, like right at my apex, they were ending and I did not like that at all. So I thought, all right, no, I don't want that. So I took it apart. I only had the front done. So I took it apart and I thought, well, I will recut these pieces, these triangle pieces, and I'll make them so that they don't come down as low. Well, I went ahead and got some more fabric thinking what I'll do is recut the entire front. No problem. My quilt shop had the fabric, ran over, got that, came back. And then I thought, yeah, let's be smart about this, shall we? And I pulled out some of my old sheets that I used for muslins and I cut the front and I put it together and I realized I need to deal with lowering the apex point on this princess seam. Now that is tricky because you gotta find out where that apex point is in the curve because it's like, it's not like a dart. It's different than a dart. So fortunately I looked through my fitting books. I watched a video online and I was able to figure that out. So I dropped the apex and when I did that, these were fine. They weren't, they didn't come down too low. So it worked, it worked beautifully. I got such a great fit. And then I, you know, I was going through, I got the back done. This was a lot of sewing because it was make the piping, sew the piping to the pattern piece on the seam line and then sew the two pattern pieces together. So it's a lot of, you know, <laughs> repetitive stuff. It wasn't difficult, it was just repetitive. So then I moved on and I put the shoulder seams together and I went to put the neck binding on and I realized it was coming up so high it was choking me. And I thought, well, that's not gonna do. So I cut the, the neckline down one inch all the way around. Then I put the neck binding on, which was totally fine because you know I just cut it a little longer and I was able to cut all the pattern pieces out of this wide quilt binding, which was great. So I did that and then I, um, tried it on, I sewed up the side seams and I tried it on and I had some gaping right here. And I have run into that a lot. Well, some of it is solved by fixing the princess seam apex problem. But I remembered one of you at one point told me, listen, you can probably play around with your shoulder seam and fix that. And I thought, hmm, okay. <laughs> so I did. I ended up going in and I tapered this out. I took about a half an inch out of this outer edge and I just tapered it in to where um, this was at the regular seam allowance. And you know what? It pulled it right up and took that right out. And it was too big. So I took two inches out of the back. I decided to take it out of the back rather than the side seams. And so I took, uh, well, a one inch seam allowance, which on either side is about an inch, so that's two inches. I was shocked at that. I got the best fit that I've had in a garment in a long time. <laughs> this feels amazing to wear. I did add side seam pockets. And then when I came to the bottom band, I realized it's an actual band that you attach to the hem of the skirt. So if you're going to adjust the hem at all, you have to deal with that band. So I pinned the band on and then I went over to the mirror and looked and then I pinched out how much I needed to shorten the dress out of here, out of the waistline. And then I came over and I measured how much I needed. It was about two and a quarter inches. So then I measured, I took the pins out, took the band off. It was only pinned on, thank God. 
and uh, shortened the hem of the dress and then I attached the band. Now that was interesting because I was scratching my head for a little bit of it thinking, what, what am I doing here? But there are no exposed seams. It's a lot of putting the right side to the wrong side and that kind of thing and then folding and pressing and stitching and it turned out beautifully. I am so happy with this dress. I was iffy on the belt because I got mixed reviews from my husband and my daughter. They said, well, the belt's okay, but we like it better without. So I thought, okay, well, you can get two different looks. You can dress it up with the belt or you can just wear it without the belt and dress it down. So with the belt, um, I interfaced both pieces of it because I wanted it a little stiffer than it would have been if I had only interfaced one piece of it. And then I found some buttons in my stash that reminded me of pearls. So uh, kind of thought that went along with, you know, the whole uh, sea life print, you know, the jellyfish and the whale and the dolphins and the turtles and fish. And, <laughs> and then I decided I would add a hat because why not? You know, we're talking about sea creatures and the beach and all that. So I thought, I'll just add a hat. That'll be fun. So this was a piece of cake. It's just like a bucket hat. And all I did was make two of them and leave an opening on the inside and turn it in, sew them together and turn it inside out. And then I added um, the uh, same quilt binding and I made a little bow. So that was the hat. Easy peasy. So that's the story of the dress. And I love this dress. I love the beach. I love the ocean. I love the sunshine. And this just brings all of that out. That is my interpretation of an animal print for our collab. Now make sure that you go and watch all the other um, Fab Five videos, which I'm definitely going to do because I have no idea what they're doing. And so I can't wait to see how they've done this. So be sure and you uh, and check them out. I will list all of their videos in the description box below, as well as the patterns here and the fabric. And so you can find all that down below. If you would like to see the other collabs we've done, check over here. I'll put together a playlist for you. And let me leave you with one of my little prayer cards. Shout with joy to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. That's from Psalm 100 verses one and two. I will see you next time. Thanks for watching.